So now I just want to show Duke with his outfit, his pet outfit on. His hat, I have a separate video tutorial for the crochet Santa's doll hat that you can add if you like it to match the pet outfit. Now I'm going to show you one of my other small Siberian Husky dogs that if you don't want to use a zipper and you don't want to use the collar, I'm going to show you how you can make the pattern without the zipper and the collar, the collar for the pet outfit. And this is my other small Siberian Husky dog. She turned out really beautiful. So I'm going to show you, if you like this style of Husky, I'm going to show you the yarn that I used to create her. I don't have any more of the color left over of the yarn that I used to make her, this lavender, light purple, pastel colored yarn. But I used Yarn B. And here's some information on this yarn. Now the problem with this yarn is I needed two skeins. And even two skeins of this yarn you have to be careful. Because as you can see, you have to be careful with where you use it because I used every bit of the two skeins. So the alternate color skein I had a little bit left over. But you could change the colors with the legs and make it fun so that you use more of the beige color here. They'll give you more of the purple. So the tail I had to use a little bit here and then use the alternate color. So those are just things that I did to help make up for the fact that you don't have quite enough of the two skeins. But it still comes out really adorably cute if you use the purple um, sparingly. If you notice, she also has this gorgeous, soft, fluffy yarn that I used on the chest and on the other side of the tail and on her face and ears. This yarn is a pipsqueak. I used a Bernat pipsqueak yarn and I used a skein of it. I'm just using this so you can find out more information about this yarn, but I actually used a beige colored and you only need one skein of this style of yarn. So if you go to the small Siberian Husky dog pattern, you'll see some other styles that I created, but I just wanted to show you how I created her because she is gorgeous. The other difference that I did with her is I put little eyelashes for her, and then I also just did a loop for the tongue. So those are the only differences from my other small Siberian Husky dogs. So for her col collar, I decided to go with a deep purple and then with the white metallic border and then the little cupcake for her button on the collar name tag and then also a button for the flower on her head and for her outfit you can see I made it the exact same way as the other small Siberian Husky the only difference is I don't have the zipper down the center so I started I have a total I started with a chain of 40 for this one so remember the zipper model had a chain of 20 and then I made two panels. So this, this style I have just started with a chain of 40 and then had fun with the colors. So you could see some of the fun that you can create. That's why I wanted to show this. So you can see the different colors that I used and coordinated and it turned out really beautiful. And then on the other side I have the ridges so it's made the exact same way as the zipper model, except I took the zipper out and just made one panel for this one. And this one has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 rows total. So now I just wanted to show you all of the dogs with their pet outfits. So this is my small Siberian Husky dog. Here is the extra small Siberian Husky dog. And again, my small Siberian Husky and my large Siberian Husky dog. If you like the style of my extra small Husky dog, Siberian Husky dog, I used for her main color, I used Pound of Love, like a turquoise color. And then for the alternate color, like for her snout and for the eyes and ears, I used a variegated Bernat baby yarn. Then I just wanted to show the back of the pet outfits. So you can see where I used the zipper 
on the small Siberian and he also has a, a collar on the pet outfit and here is the pet outfit for the extra small Siberian Husky Dog here's another version if you don't want the zipper for the small Siberian Husky Dog and then for the large Siberian Husky Dog I put the zipper but again you can also you make this version without the zipper you can modify it and make it the same way there's a separate video tutorial for the nurse's hat there's a separate video tutorial for the crochet Santa doll's hat For this crochet project, you're going to need your 5.75 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. I'm using my Pound of Love yarn, and this is a turquoise color. And then for the alternate color, I'm using this beautiful variegated Bernat Baby Sport yarn. You'll only need a skein of each and you'll have plenty left over. This is my small Siberian Husky dog and just like I showed you in the video tutorial sometimes I'll dress them in adorable pet outfits like this one but if you want to make your own collar and pet outfit then I have separate video tutorials for the pet collar but I'm going to show you what I started with as far as the chain in order to make the pet collar for the small one. The pet collar on video tutorial is for my large Siberian Husky dog, but I'll show you the chain. It's made the exact same way, except the starting chain is smaller for the small and the extra small Siberian Husky dog. So here is an example of the pet collar that's made for this extra small Siberian Husky dog. So for this one, I started with a chain of 20 for the extra small. Then I'm going to show you how to make the pet outfit for the extra small. After I'm finished making the pet out for the extra, for the extra small, then I'll show you the differences for the small Siberian Husky. For the extra small pet collar, I used my 4mm crochet hook, and then I also used my 4mm crochet hook to make the collar for my small Siberian Husky dog. For the pet outfits, I used my 5.75mm crochet hook. You're also going to need a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. The yarn that I used is I Love This Yarn. This one's a metallic white color. And then for the alternate color, I used I Love This Cotton yarn. And then I chose the light blue sparkly yarn. And then the red colored 100% cotton, I Love This Cotton yarn. So the first thing you want to do is start with the main color yarn that you want for your dog. And you can use the equivalent yarn for this for your alternate color also, or an equivalent yarn. And once you make the pet outfit, then you'll know how to do it, and you can change the size and make it however you want for your particular dog. But take the main color right now, and for my case, it's going to be the white metallic, and you're just going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch the loop around your crochet hook, not too tight and not too loose. And then you're going to make your starting chain. I'm just going to show you four of them. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, 
three, and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 20, and then come back. So now I have my chain of 20. Then you're going to take and hold that last stitch with your middle finger and your thumb, and we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain one, and then make a single crochet into the, into the second chain from the hook, which was the stitch that you were holding. Bring up a loop, make a single crochet, and then that counts as your first single crochet for the next row. Go into the next stitch over for your second single crochet. You want a total of five single crochet. So in the next stitch will be your third single crochet. Next stitch will be your fourth. And then the next stitch will be your fifth. So you have one single crochet in five stitches or five total stitches so far. Now you're going to want to make a double crochet so your yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops, you have two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops to complete a double crochet and you want one double crochet into a total of five stitches. So this pattern is multiple of 10, but you can get away with a multiple of 5 if you wanted to start a larger or smaller size. So that's my third double crochet. It's my fourth and my fifth. So this is the bottom portion of one full wave, which is a total of 10 stitches, which is why this pattern is a multiple of 10. But you could get away with a half wave, so multiple of 5 will also work. So now you just keep repeating this pattern. You're going to make one single crochet into the next 5 stitches. and then come back. Then you need one double crochet into the last five stitches. Now you have finished two waves. This is the bottom half of the wave. You need to make the top part of the wave now. So one full wave will take two rows. So since we're completing the top part of the wave now, we look at the previous row and it was a double crochet. So we need to start the next row with a double crochet. So go ahead and chain three. One, two, three, and then turn your work. So that first chain three counts as your first double crochet for this row. You can see the little upslope in the stitch below the chain three. You're not going to work in this stitch here. You're going to work in the next stitch over and make a double crochet. So since this counts as your first double crochet, we're going to make our next double crochet, which will be our second double crochet for the row. And then a double crochet into the next stitch for the third double crochet in the next stitch for the fourth and a double crochet in the next stitch for the fifth. Then you're going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches and you can see how the double crochets and the single crochets are lining up with the previous rows, double crochets and single crochets. We just completed our first wave. So go ahead. Now you're going to make one double crochet into the next five stitches and then one single crochet into the last five stitches for the row and then come back. So now you just finished two full waves. So it takes two rows to complete a wave. And now you can see 
that these little circles here complete the double crochet part of the wave. And then here's your other double crochet part of the wave. We're going to move that double crochet over to the end. But before that, we're going to change colors. So you're going to take and bring up a loop with the light blue color. Just chain one. Then you're going to take and cut your previous color. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. So go ahead and tie a knot. Now you have your new color and we're going to start this row with a double crochet. So you can see that the previous rows had a single crochet. So we're moving the double crochet portion over. So you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then turn your work. And then we're going to crochet around the loose yarn ends to bury them. And then the other thing I want to show you about the stitches. I'm going to use my tapestry needle to show you. So here you can see a little bit of an upslope. That's our first stitch that's below the chain three, so we're not going to work into that stitch. We're going to work into the next stitch over. And you can see that I went under both loops of the next stitch. For this row, we're not going to go under through both loops. You're going to go right down the center of the stitch and you're going to grab that back loop only. So we're going to be crocheting in the back loop only for this row with our new color. So you're going to take and make a double crochet into the next stitch over. So you yarn over and then you're going to go right down the center of the next stitch grabbing the back loop only. And you're also going to go behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, make your double crochet. So we just completed our second double crochet in the new color. Now we're going to make another double crochet into the next stitch because remember we want a total of five and you're going into the back loop only of the stitch. Going behind the loose yarn ends, bringing up a loop, completing your double crochet, double crochet into the next stitch, back loop only, going behind the loose yarn ends, completing the double crochet, and then the next stitch, back loop only, behind the loose yarn ends, bring up your double crochet. So now you have a total of five double crochet and you can see how you're creating a ridge by crocheting in the back loop only. That's going to separate your full waves. Now you want one single crochet into the next five stitches in the back loop only. So I'm going to go into the next stitch in the back loop only, going behind my loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, and make a single crochet. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut those loose yarn ends, get them out of my way. You could keep going if you wanted to and burying them for as much as you want, but I want them out of the way so that you can see me crocheting in the back loop, make it a little easier for you to see. So I made one single crochet. Now I'm going into the next stitch, back loop only, bringing up a loop, making my single crochet. So that's my second. You want a total of five. So I just finished my first bottom portion of a wave and you can see the ridge that's created. On the right side you won't have a ridge. So now go ahead and repeat this pattern all the way across. Now you're going to make one double crochet in the back loop only. So one double crochet into the next five stitches in the back loop only and then one single crochet in the last 
five stitches in the back loop only to complete this row. This is how my work looks so far. You can see the ridge that I've created. And this ridge will be on the top of a full wave only. Now we're going to complete the top portion of the wave. So this is our fourth row that we're going to work on. And you can see from the previous row that we have a single crochet. So you're going to chain one for this next row and then turn your work. That first chain counts as your first single crochet for this row. Now we're going to go into the next stitch over. Now you don't want the ridge on this row, so you're going to go under both loops for this row of the next stitch. Bring up a loop, make your single crochet. That's my second single crochet. And you want a total of five. Go into the next stitch. And again, I'm going under both loops of the stitch. Bring up a loop. My third single crochet, next stitch, fourth, and fifth. Then you're going to make one double crochet into the next five stitches. And again, you're going under both loops of the next stitch, completing your double crochet. So go ahead, finish this row, and then come back. And now you just completed your second full wave in the different color. And that's all you do. You just keep repeating this pattern. And you can see how I have the one double crochet loop here and then the one here. And it's just going to keep on alternating. So I'm going to work two more full waves with you to make sure that you have the pattern down. So now I'm going to change colors back to the white. So now I've changed colors back to the white. And I can see that the previous wave had double crochets on the end. So I want to start this row with a chain one. So I'm going to chain one, turn my work. I'm not going to work into the stitch right beneath my chain one. I want to go into the next stitch over. And since this is on top of the full wave, I'm going to be working into the back loop only to create a ridge. So I'm going to go down the center of the stitch, go into the back loop only, and I'm also going to go behind my loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, complete my single crochet, and then you can kind of pull on your loose yarn ends to bring them underneath as you bury them. So that counts as my second single crochet. I'm going into the next stitch back loop only behind the loose yarn ends for my third single crochet. Next stitch back loop only behind the loose yarn ends for my fourth back stitch only for my fifth single crochet. Then I'm ready for my double crochets. So one double crochet into the back loop only behind my loose yarn ends for a total of five. So go ahead, finish this row. I just want to show you the beautiful ridge that's created separating the waves. Then you're going to go ahead and make the top portion of the wave. So here I finished with a double crochet on the half wave. So I need a double crochet for the next row for the top portion of the wave. So I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Turn my work. Then I'm going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. But this time I'm going to go through both loops because I don't want to create a ridge down the center of my wave. So one double crochet until I have a total of five and this completes half of the full wave. And then on the back you can see that my ridge is only on the top of the wave never through the center. 
So right now, I'm completing the top part of the wave, so I don't want a ridge down the center of the wave. So then, my next stitch, going through both loops, I need a single crochet, and then I need a single crochet in each of the five stitches for a total of five single crochet, and then repeat across to the end. And you just completed three full waves. So you can see how I alternated. Here's the double crochet portion of the wave. And you can see how it alternates. So you're going to keep alternating. Here you can see, so the next one would be here. So you just keep repeating this until you have the size that you want. So for the extra small dog, I only made three total full waves or six rows total. And I'm going to go ahead and finish off. So just yarn over and then pull enough yarn through to bury into my work. So this is how you make the extra small. And then the small Siberian Husky is made the exact same way, except I made a total of, this is one full wave, so that counts as one wave, two, three, four, five, six waves, or a total of 12 rows. So it's made the same way, except I made double the size. And then, for the small Siberian, you're actually going to need two of the exact same size of panels because you're going to sew them onto a zipper portion. The zipper that I used was a size 7 inch polyester white zipper. Here's some information about it. So I'll come back to the small Siberian Husky for those that are making that one. I'm going to finish up the small Siberian Husky. So I'm going to show you how to bury the loose yarn ends. You just take your tapestry needle and the loose yarn end and you just kind of weave it into the wrong side of the pet outfit, which is the side with the ridges. And then once it's buried, you just take and trim it. Now for the extra small Siberian Husky, you're going to take your whatever color you used down the center strip, you're going to take that same color and you're going to join. Here you have the side where the double crochet is on the end. You're going to take and go into the gap beneath the double crochet. You're going to bring up a loop, chain one, and then just tie a knot. And then you're just going to leave the loose yarn end for burying later. Then you're going to chain one again and then make a single crochet into the same space. Then you're going to make a single crochet in the gap under the double crochet next to it. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, Make a single crochet into the next stitch over, chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch over, and you're going to keep repeating this until you have the length that you want for the underbelly. For mine, I'm going to make two more, so I'm going to chain one, turn, single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, turn, and then single crochet into the next stitch. So mine is about an inch to an inch and a half. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the two ends together. So now I'm going to take my extra small Siberian Husky and the first thing I'm going to do is just bury the loose yarn end. After you bury the loose yarn end, you want to put the ridge side of your work down on top of the Siberian Husky. You can see I have the right side facing up. Then you're going to take and turn the crochet dog and you're going to bring the underbelly over and then sew the two pieces together. Make sure that you only sew the pet outfit. You don't want to sew the dog to the pet outfit. So you just go through the opposite side of the pet outfit, bring the two edges together, and then just sew the two edges together under the pet outfit. Then when you're finished, you can take and tie a knot and again, I'm not sewing the pet outfit to the underbelly of the dog. And then once you've finished tying your knot, you can go ahead and bury the loose yarn end. And then you are finished with the pet outfit for the small Siberian Husky. I kind of tucked the fabric under the legs. So now I'm going to show you how to make the collar. So the first thing you're going to do is just make a chain the size of the neck of your dog. Mine is a chain of 30. And then you're just going to make your wave the same way that you did for the small dog and then the border the same way that you made for the small dog. So I'm going to hold that last stitch I made. I'm going to chain one and then make a single crochet into the next. Actually, you're going to go into the second chain from the hook and make your single crochet. That counts as your first single crochet for the wave one single crochet into the next stitch for your second, one single crochet into the next stitch for your third, one single crochet into the next stitch for, stitch for your fourth, and then your fifth. So one single crochet into a total of five stitches, and then one double crochet into the next five stitches, and then you're going to make one full wave. So remember this is the half wave, the bottom portion of the wave. So go ahead and repeat this pattern. One single crochet into five stitches and then one double crochet into five stitches all the way across. Then you can see how I made half of the wave. I'm going to make the top portion of the wave. So I'm going to chain three, turn my work, and then finish making the wave back across. So one double crochet into five, and then one single crochet into five all the way back across. Then I join my white yarn to make a one single crochet in every stitch around the border. I'm going around my loose yarn ends to bury. So just like the small dog, I'm going to make the extra small dog. I'm going to make one single crochet in every stitch around with my white yarn. Then you just take your collar 
and put it around the dog and sew the two ends of the collar together. Then you can take and sew your charm or button in place. So right in the center you can sew the button and in this case I'm using one of my cupcake buttons just like I did for the extra small. So you can go right through the back of the button and then just sew it in place and then bury your loose yarn ends. Now for the small Siberian Husky you're going to want to get your two panels that you made and again you make it the same way as you did for the extra small except you're going to add three more rows and then you're going to change colors in wherever area that you want to change colors. So this is how I made mine so I have a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 rows for this panel and the same thing for the opposite panel. And what I'm going to do is take the same colored yarn and then you're going to line up the panel. Make sure that you have the right side up. The ridge side is going to be down. And then I have the zipper with the zipper part up, the part that unzips, that's laying up. I'm going to lay the side of the panel so that it lines up with the bottom of the zipper and then I'm going to take my tapestry needle and then I'm going to go through the wrong side and then I'm going to go through the side of the panel making sure that that bottom portion of the zipper is covered. Covered. So I'm going to come up, make sure that you leave enough of a loose yarn in on the other side for burying into your work. Then you're going to go back down, you're lining up the, the panel right alongside the zipper. So you're going to go down about a centimeter down into the pan, the zipper, and then you're going to tie a knot. And then we'll bury that loose yarn in later. Then you're just going to go about a centimeter over. And then you're going to come up through the work and you're just going to sew the panel to the zipper. You're just going to keep, make sure that it's lined up evenly. And when you get to the white portion or the color change, you're going to want to use the same colored yarn for that portion. So I just want to show you what I did. So when I got to the white portion, then I'm going to skip over that portion with my red yarn and then come up where the red portion is and finish sewing. So you're going to still have part of the zipper left over. That's where the collar is going to lie. So for now, just sew both panels on the exact same way. Make sure that you have the right side facing up before you sew it in place. This is how mine looks after sewing the red portion only for now. And then I'm just going to take my loose yarn end and then weave it through the wrong side of the work. And I like to go through a couple of times to make sure it's nice and buried. And then once I have it buried, then I can take and trim the loose yarn end. 
So I'm going to go ahead and sew the other red panel on before I sew the white panel, and then I'll show you what I did with the white panel, the white portion of the panel. The other thing you want to make sure of is that the top portion of the red will line up with the top portion on the other side of the zipper. So you may want to use a safety pin to help you hold that in place at the top. The other thing I did was just open up the zipper so that I can work easily along the zipper line, making my stitches. Then, after you sew the red portion on, you're just going to take your white colored yarn, or whatever yarn that you used for your alternate color, and then you're just going to sew that portion in place. So I'm going to go from the wrong side to the right side, and then sew it on exactly the same way. I'm going to make sure that I have enough of a loose yarn in on the other side, and then I'm going to stitch the white portion in place. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot on the wrong side. And then I also went around the red stitch and just kind of stitched around the red portion to secure it with the white colored yarn. And then I just tie a knot and then bury the loose yarn ends and then I repeat the same thing on the opposite side. And this is what it looks like after sewing the white portion down on the wrong side. This is what it will look like on the right side. So now I'm going to show you how to make the collar. So we're going to start with whatever color yarn you want for your collar and just fold over the yarn on itself to form a loop. Put your crochet hook right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb. Then just yarn over. Pull the yarn through the loop for a slip knot. Then just cinch the loop around the hook. Then you're going to make a chain of 14. I'm just going to show you four of them. So go ahead, finish a chain of 14, and then come back. Then you're going to hold that last stitch with your middle finger and thumb, and then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then you're going to make one double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, which is the stitch that you're holding. So just yarn over, go into the fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, and then make one double crochet into each of the first five, for a total of five double crochet. So right now I have four, I need one more. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next five stitches. and then make one double crochet into each of the remaining five stitches. So it's just like the body, except you're starting with the double crochet. Go ahead and turn your work, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch over. And remember, you're going to go through both loops because we're completing the wave. So there's my second double crochet, third, 
fourth, and fifth. So now you're going to make one single crochet into the next five stitches and then finish up with one double crochet into each of the remaining stitches, five stitches, and then come back. Now we're going to move up to the next row. So for the next row, since the previous row was a double crochet for the completed wave, we're going to start with a chain of one. Turn your work, and this row that first chain is going to count as your first single crochet for the row. And then again, since we're working on top of the full completed wave, we're going to go into the next stitch and work into the back loop only to make our second single crochet. Next stitch, back loop only for the third. Next stitch, back loop only for the fourth single crochet. And our fifth single crochet in the back loop only. Then you're going to make one double crochet into the back loop of the next five stitches and then one single crochet into the back loop of each of the remaining five stitches and then come back. Now you've completed the half bottom portion of the wave so now you're going to make the top portion since the previous row was a single crochet you're going to chain one, turn your work, make a single crochet into the next stitch over, and since it's completing the top portion of the wave, you want both loops. So one single crochet for a total of five stitches, and then one double crochet into both loops of the next five stitches and then one single crochet into the five remaining stitches and then come back. This is how your work looks so far. Now you want to repeat for one more full wave so I'm going to work it with you. So now on the previous row you had a single crochet so to start the next wave you want a double crochet. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, turn your work, and since this is going to be the start of a new wave, you want to work into the back loop only for your next double crochet. So that's our second, third, fourth, and fifth. So go ahead and make your one single crochet into the next five stitches, the back loops only, and then complete your last five double crochet in the back loop only. Now, we're going to go ahead and finish our last row, which is the upper portion of our last full wave. So since our bottom portion had a double crochet, the top portion is going to have a double crochet, so chain three, turn your work, and then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch going under both loops because you're completing the top portion of the wave. So five double crochet, one double crochet in each stitch, and then one single crochet into the next five stitches, and then one double crochet into the five remaining stitches to complete the full wave. Then you've completed three full waves or a total of six rows. You can see how I'm alternating the waves. So now you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And you're going to need four of these. So make four of these for the collar. Now you're going to take two of those collar pieces that you just made. Make sure that the loose yarn ends are buried on the ridge side of your work. Then you're going to take and lie the right side up on both sides of the zipper. Now one side will line up along with the wave and then one won't, so don't worry about that. Just make sure that you have the right sides facing up. Then you're going to take and fold one of the collars down on top of the body of the pet outfit. 
so that the right sides are together. Then take the same colored yarn and your tapestry needle and you're going to take, line up the edges of the pet outfit and then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go through the top stitch of both the pet outfit and the collar and then just sew the pieces together. Make sure that you leave a long loose yarn end for tying the knot. And then you're going to repeat this on the opposite side as well with the other collar. And then you're just going to take and go in and out grabbing the stitch on the collar and the stitch on the pet outfit and just sewing the collar to the pet outfit. And then repeat the same thing on the other side. Now after you get to the end, after sewing the pet collar to the pet outfit, you're going to flip up the collar so that the right side is showing and then you're going to line up the collar with the zipper and then just sew the zipper to the collar. So you're just going to continue going up the side of the collar and sewing it in place. So this is what your collar looks like on the right side. So now you're going to turn it over so that the wrong side is facing you. And you could put your loose yarn ends into the center. Or even use them too if you want to help close it up. Then you're going to take the back side of the collar, the other two pieces that you made, and you're going to line up so that the right side is facing you, so the two wrong sides are together. Put any loose yarn ends towards the center. Then you're just going to take and sew the two pieces together. So you're basically just hiding the wrong side of the collar and the zipper. So you're just going to line up the wrong side of the collar to cover the opposite side of the zipper and then you're just going to sew the back side of the collar in place. Just sew all around the edge of the back side of the collar. And this is what it looks like after I'm all finished with the bottom portion and the collar. And here's the other side of the collar. So now you're ready to place the strap that goes under the belly. So just line up with the right side up on top of the dog. You can see how the collar will lay down just like that. Then you're going to take the little white strip or that center strip that you made and you're going to turn the dog over. And just like the extra small, you're going to make a strap that will fit across the bottom of the dog. So for mine, I went through the right side of the pet outfit towards the wrong side and I just took my white colored yarn or whatever color that you have for this center strip, bring up a loop, chain one, and then go ahead and tie a knot. Make sure you leave a good loose yarn end for burying into the work. Then you're going to chain one. Then you're going to go into that same gap of the double crochet on his side. You bring up a loop, make a single crochet. And I'm burying my loose yarn end on the other side as I crochet. Then I'm going to make one more single crochet in the same space. 
and then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next double crochet space beneath the double crochet that will gap. I'm going to make one more. So that gives me a total of four stitches. So I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn my work. I buried my loose yarn in, so I'm going to go ahead and trim that. And then I'm going to go into the next stitch over for a single crochet, next stitch over for a single crochet, and the next stitch over for a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain one, turn my work, go into the next stitch over, make my single crochet, next stitch, single crochet, and next stitch, single crochet. So you can see how I'm creating a four stitch strap for the bottom until it reaches the other side. So chain one, turn your work, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, make your single crochet, and then make one single crochet in each stitch across. And your strap should be four stitches for each row. So I finished about one, two, three, four rows. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Bring enough yarn through to sew the strap in place. So now I just want to bring both sides of the pet outfit under the belly of the dog. And then I'm going to take my tapestry needle put it onto the long end that you left for sewing on your strap and then you're just going to take and center it with the opposite side and then just sew it in place. And then you can take and tie a knot Make sure you don't sew it to your dog, so it's not attached to my dog at all. And then I'm just going to take and tie a knot. And then I'm going to bury my loose yarn end. Just going to weave it through a couple of times. And then once it's buried, you can go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. And then the pet outfit is attached underneath. And now I'm going to show you how to make the collar. Now you can take the excess that you had on the body of the pet outfit where you didn't sew the collar and you can attach your crochet hook to the end and then bring up a loop with your crochet hook and then chain one and then tie a knot make sure you have a enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then I'm just going to bring my loose yarn end to the side so I can bury it as I crochet. Then you're going to chain one and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over. So that's your second stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch over for your third stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch over for your fourth stitch. And then single crochet into the next stitch over for your fifth stitch. And then you can go ahead and trim the loose yarn end. Then you're going to chain one 
and then turn your work and then you're going to go into the next stitch over for a single crochet next stitch over for a single crochet next stitch over for a single crochet so now I have one, two, three, four stitches. Go ahead and go into that last stitch there to make your fifth single crochet. Then you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then just keep repeating one single crochet into each stitch. for a total of five stitches for the row and you're going to create the front strap that goes across the front of the dog. So I'm just going to trim this loose yarn end a little bit more. So you see how I'm starting to form a strap. So chain one, turn your work, and repeat until the strap reaches the opposite side along the front of the dog and then come back. So for mine I have about 12 rows and then you can see how after I stretch it across the front of the dog I want to line it up with the other five stitches on the other end of the collar so you can see where it would line up right across the front of the dog. So here you can see this is the right side of the pet collar. This is when the collar is folded down and then this is where I created my strap. So if you want to you can just create your strap here if you're making it the same size as my dog and you don't want to measure it. And then what you can do is go ahead and finish off once you have the size that you want for your strap. So you just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the strap to the opposite side. So now before you sew it you want to turn your work inside out. So now I have my work inside out. And then I'm going to take and sew the strap to the opposite side. And you want to make sure that you don't have the front strap twisted. And then just take your tapestry needle, line up the strap on the opposite side. So it's that free piece that you had on the opposite side of the collar, the other collar. Go ahead and line it up and then just sew the stitches together. Then you can take and tie a knot and then bury your loose yarn in. And that's how you have this, the strap around the front. And then the last thing I'll show you is how to make his pet collar. Then you're finished with your collar and your pet outfit. And for her outfit, you can see I made it the exact same way as the other small Siberian Husky. The only difference is I don't have the zipper down the center. So I started, I have a total, I started with a chain of 40 for this one. So remember, the zipper model had a chain of 20, and then I made two panels. So this, this style, I have just started with a chain of 40 and then had fun with the colors. So you could see some of the fun that you can create. That's why I wanted to show this. So you can see the different colors that I used and coordinated 
and it turned out really beautiful. And then on the other side, I have the ridges. So it's made the exact same way as the zipper model, except I took the zipper out and just made one panel for this one. And this one has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 rows total. So for this model, what I did was I folded the panel in half so I can find the center. And then once you find the center, you're going to line it up with the collar. And then I'm just going to sew this center portion to the collar. So once you have it lined up, I have the right side up for the outfit. I'm going to bring it up. And then I'm just going to have the right side of the collar matching up with the right side of the outfit. So before I start sewing, I'll have the ridged side up. And then I'm going to sew the outfit to the collar with my tapestry needle. So I just took my tapestry needle and then I went through the portion that I want to sew to the collar and tied a knot and then I'm just going to go in and out grabbing one stitch of the outfit with one stitch on the collar and I'm using the same color as the the border on the collar the pet collar and I'm just going to sew 10 stitches together for mine and you can determine for your pet outfit how many stitches you want to sew together. For mine, I'm doing a total of 10 stitches. Then you can take and flip the pet outfit down. And this is how mine looks so far. Then you can take, you can bury your loose yarn ends too. I'm going to bury that first. Then, you can take, after you've buried the loose yarn ends, you can take the outfit and then go under the body. And for this outfit, I was able to match the two ends, but I've already showed you how to make a strap if you need to. This one, I can just sew the ends together. So for mine, I'm just going to use the white colored yarn and also make sure that you don't sew the pet outfit to the dog. And then you just sew the two ends together. And then bury your loose yarn ends. Then this is what it looks like underneath. And then this is what it looks like on the dog. So if you're really in love with this, these colors and her outfit, like I am, I just wanted to go over real quick. I just used some of my leftover yarn, but I'll show you what yarn that I used. I used Red Heart with Love, and this color was Berengena Aberdeen. And then I also used Red Heart Super Saver, color Lavender. And then Pound of Love, just their pastel purple. And then I also used Red Hearts Medium Purple. I used Karen Simply Soft. And the color on that was Grape. And then for the white color, the metallic color, I used I Love This Yarn. It's in my leftover metallic white. And then the other sparkly white that I used a little bit of was a Red Heart yarn.